dear colleagues, as we are giving our speeches, the genocide of Palestinians in Gaza by the murderous Israeli state continues unabated with the support or tolerance of the United States, European Union, and their allies. We, on behalf of 110 million members all over the world, we demand immediate ceasefire, justice, and freedom for Palestine. Through the creation of an independent Palestinian state on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. The struggle for peace for us has specific content. It opposes imperialistic wars and supports the right of every people to choose their own path without interventions, sanctions, blockades, and economic wars. We are living in a period where the crisis of capitalism is generalized and deepening. Social inequalities, exploitation, and poverty are dramatically widening. The high cost of living is brutally undermining the living standards of workers and pensioners. Individual contracts, privatizations, outsourcing, teleworking, and service leasing are just some of the methods being used to deregulate labor and intensify exploitation. The right to organize and engage in collective bargaining, as well the sacred right to strike, is under attack. Workers and pensioners do not passively accept this reality. They resist neoliberal, capitalist, and anti-worker attacks. They demand the satisfaction of their contemporary needs. They realize that only through struggles can their lives change. Unfortunately, the harsh daily reality of workers is far from the pleasant slogans that abound in ILO declarations. This year, a new grandiose terminology has been introduced in the General Director Report. Another slogan in luxurious packaging, the new social contract. What the workers need are measures, rights, not slogans. Pro protection of trade union freedoms and ensure permanent and stable employment regulated by collective agreements to meet their contemporary needs. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, this year, as we all know, is an election year for ILO. But are these elections truly democratic? Do they ensure even minimal representativeness and pluralism? No, absolutely no. It is clear that the representation of workers is systematically monopolized, and the opinions of hundreds of millions of workers represented by the WFTU and other international organizations are marginalized and ignored. Of course, this monopolization of the workers' representation is not maintained by chance. It suits the ruling circles. It is convenient for them to have workers represented by unions that have long abandoned class struggle and do not challenge their omnipotence. It suits them also to maintain the practice of double standards, targeting countries like Cuba, Belarus, Syria, and many others for not aligning with their geopolitical plans while they cuttle Israel and obscure 
their own anti-workers' practices. The WFTU will not stop fighting and demanding a genuinely representative and pluralistic ILO with democratic and participatory functioning as dictated by its role and the reasons for its creation. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, representative of workers, the weapon of the workers all over the world is solidarity and internationalism. World Federation of Trade Union will continue to fight for a world without wars and imperialistic interventions, without exploitation and discrimination, where work will be permanent and stable, regulated and safe. Thank you very much.